Next to present their key finding is one of the colleagues of the biodiversity stream. Shilok Munyengwa, welcome, please. Um, afternoon, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, honorable ministers present, all delegates as well as participants. It's an honor to summarize the outcomes of the biodiversity stream. We had three main sessions under the biodiversity stream and several cross-cutting themes. So what we've done and what we're presenting attempts to summarize the key issues. But as I, as I go into the presentation, you realize a lot of the issues have been presented. We're seeing a lot of commonalities in terms of um, what is coming out. Uh, I'd like to thank my colleagues, which is Michelle, Yusuf, and Louisa, as well as the dedicated volunteers who helped us uh, put this together. The key discussions in the biodiversity were around the realization that biodiversity in its entirety, so we're not focusing on mega megafauna, from the smallest to the biggest species, is going to be critical in the economic growth of Africa. But for that to happen, there has to be sound planning. In addition, not only planning, but there has to be coordinated response in approaching how we plan biodiversity in order to address the different geographical shifts uh, in the distribution of species, habitats, um, as well as how we address emerging threats, how we value, how we value the um, sort of the biodiversity, as well as our systems for research. Then the issue of communities cannot be overemphasized. And in our um, stream, uh, the cage phrase was local communities should be regarded as primary stakeholders, investors and shareholders of biodiversity conservation on this continent. Um, the third main um, um, key message is, uh, is around ecological connectivity. So we have to start thinking beyond smaller landscapes. Africa is one connected landscape and we need to be thinking around that. So here what the members were calling is we can even move beyond one or two, three, uh, one or two um, trans, trans boundary conservation initiatives to start thinking at a broader scale. Assessments are key, which is evidence. Uh, it was also recommended uh, that it's required uh, or we need to do that in order to uh, assess how future developments can potentially affect um, biodiversity. Then the fourth point was, which we've put in bold, um, is the requirement that we need to make bold commitments to address issues of climate change on this continent. We should not ignore the youth perspective as we accelerate and operationalize again issues of uh, pan-African funding uh, were not at this key in part of this process in order for us to strengthen solutions around um, climate change impact on bi biodiversity, indigenous knowledge as has been presented by other uh, speakers, as well as building the capacity of young people to better position themselves as partners in the vision to build resilience um, of biodiversity in Africa. Then challenges, there were a lot, but we're also trying to streamline. Uh, we'll highlight four main ones. The, the first one being biodiversity requires an approach or it requires management. But what's being observed across the continent is we've got different standards and norms, um, as well as policies across countries, across agencies, and that um, hopefully needs to be uh, rectified. Then the funding aspect as well came out that we don't have integrated long-term funding supporting a lot of these biodiversity initiatives 
on the continent. Fourth is the lack of a, um, clear and effective models for partnerships with communities when it comes to issues of biodiversity conservation. So as you move from country to country, what was coming out is stakeholders work differently or they partner differently uh, with communities when we're dealing with issues of biodiversity. Um, several opportunities were highlighted, one being the fact that um, there's a willing private sector uh, that is ready to invest support as in developing and marketing the resources that we have uh, on this continent. Um, there's also an opportunity to enhance value chains uh, through payment for ecosystem, bioprospecting, um, as well as investing in high value uh, bi biodiversity uh, value chains. Um, given the exchange of information around here, there's also a recognition, also there's also an opportunity, as other pre previous speakers have indicated, for us to develop communities of practice that allow us to see these things from a continental perspective, uh, rather than uh, at, 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 at country or community level. Um, some of the suggestions are issues around policy, uh, the community models that I talked about, as well as uh, data and data systems around protected areas. Then the next is around quotable courts. Um, there's been realization amongst the other streams that gender is quite key. And one of our um, um, most impactful session was the all-female convene, convened uh, plenary, and that's where we picked our quotations. Um, Jennifer Mohamed Kateriri says, I don't know many women in conservation who think linearly. Most women in conservation think dynamically. They think about connections. Whether we get that as men, I'm not sure, but, but um, I think the session itself helped unpack how we need to be incorporating all the different worldviews in how we relate with nature. Um, then uh, the, the next quotable quote is in the struggle for indigenous control over lands and ability to get food from their lands, we realize we need to build capacity of our women. Again, the realization that women are close to biodiversity as well as feeding us, so we cannot ignore that. And the last one from Solange says, research has shown us when women have secure rights, which allow them to participate meaningfully in natural resources management, conservation results improve. So I hope these quotes help bring the gender balance that's been uh, reported as missing in, in, in some of the sessions. And then I move to the recommendations. We've split our recommendations um, and try to identify to whom these recommendations will apply. And like what the previous speakers have said, this is work in progress. For African governments, it is recommended that they should assist communities that are vulnerable and around our protected and conserved areas in ways that put less pressure on biodiversity. This could include channeling finance to people, as well as communities living in and around these areas so that we enhance resilience. For the IUCN, uh, we recommended that it should support the establishment of the Women in Conservation Congress and invest in women's solidarity networks, particularly around indigenous women to support conservation in Africa. Then we've got two general recommendations that are going to countries. Um, one being that they should adopt the no net loss biodiversity, um, sorry, the, the no net loss of biodiversity for approved infrastructure projects, as well as enhanced synergies with private sector. So. Then the second one is countries need to synergize their strategies for biodiversity conservation uh, across uh, the different organization, countries, regions, and so on. 
And then for protected area managers, we are recommending that they need to embrace as well as collectively integrate the different technologies that have been showcased uh, during this conference. For the ministries of finance as well as development partners, we're recommending that they should explore opportunities uh, for sustainable financing in order to support the different conservation strategies on the continent. And for everyone here, we also have got a recommendation for everyone here that we should invest in mentoring, supporting, and educating the next generation of conservationists. Thank you so much.